welcome to another episode of Some Cyclist Somewhere Gets Reamed by Another Cycling Company Because They Can't Drill a Hole Straight. In today's episode, we have quite possibly the newest bike frame that has been on the show to date. We have this, this Sato frame made in Italy and it is all of two weeks old. The guy that uh, sent me this frame said the bike shop in question was a bunch of beep and then um, sent it here because after two weeks the bottom bracket decided to creak. Now the only thing I've done since this frame got here is taking the chain off. So um, he's got, well if I just talk you through the bike now, it's got um, I think that is an XTR crank, uh, sorry cassette. DI2 everywhere and a set of wind space hyper wheels, disc brakes and speed plate pedals. So I'm guessing the retail on this bike is probably around six, maybe seven thousand um, dollars. And the fact that the bottom bracket's not working, it needs some further investigation. So I've been set a challenge because I have to turn this around in three days. The chap works for the NHS and he needs the bike back as soon as possible. So without further ado, let me talk you through, well, the bottom bracket. So this is the bottom bracket. So this is the bike as I got it. Literally, all I've done is put a bit of tape around the rear chain stay, tape around there, and then take the chain off. Um, it's got oval chain rings, and uh, this Durace is 9,100. If you just give it a spin, it's okay but you can hear it rumbling and it almost feels like it's rubbing. However, I'm hoping this gets picked up by the mic. The bearing on one side, I think it's that side, has collapsed. There's no lateral play in it, so it's not the preload that's causing it. It's literally bearing on one side, I think drive side, has collapsed. So we'll get this off and have a look. This is the um, uh, FSA crank. Now, what you can see is things going round, but that bearing seal's not moving. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have to press very hard, and hopefully you can see that that seal is moving independently of the axle. It's not supposed to do that, it's supposed to do that. So <laughs> there's obviously something not right straight away pop that out and um, there's a running track on that axle We've got full of grease in there um, oh that bearing feels a bit crunchy oh that one feels not so good either right the other thing to note is if you look at this bottom bracket and it won't be so apparent on the camera but so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a feeler gauge out so if I get um, Point one. Got point one. Point one millimeter feeler gauge. This frame is far from being axially flat. So in there, get a feeler gauge in. Round here, can't get that in at all. So in here, I mean that gap's massive. What have we got? Point one. Point oh five. Yeah, so that's 0.15, that goes in. So now we're up to 0.2, let's try a 0.3. So it's not quite, oh, that, that's probably 0.2. Oh, yeah, so that goes in all the way. Around there there's nothing. So there's a huge gap there so this isn't this frame is not straight across there next thing we need to do is we need to get this bottom bracket out so with a this is actually a brake uh, pin removal tool so with this and a, a mallet we're just going to tap this out that's one side so we'll get the other one out now 
So the next thing we need to do is well, there's a sleeve inside. We'll fish that out, which is that. And now we need to pop this out. So this is the FSA bottom bracket that's been removed. So this is one cup. Um, the other side, the um, cup came out with bearing. Now this bearing is quite an interesting design. So it's an MR2437. So it literally goes straight on to the axle. Okay, there's no Delrin sleeve between it. You can see there's a bit of play there. And that's what's caused this running track on this side. Um, so yeah, that, that is not something that's good because this bearing is really, really hard and that axle, even though it's steel, is not. The, the interesting part of this is, this is a special bearing. It's unique to FSA. So this shield on the outside is part of the dust seal. And um, this bearing's fucked, by the way. Um, and this is a, <laughs> a classic case of designed by a wanker, AKA the accounts department. So this bearing seal is proprietary, so you will only be able to fit um, FSA bearings in there because they've got a groove that's been machined in where this uh, sleeve clips into. So that is there, it's shit, the bearings are shit. The sleeve is going to give you about as much alignment capability as a piece of jelly because it's flexible as fuck and I haven't really got much to say about it. There's plenty of grease in there so the bike shop that uh, put it together did did a real good job with the level of grease but yeah it's shit. The chap gave this Hambini bottom bracket, this is this one, to the bike shop who tried to fit it. Now when they tried to fit it they said this was too tight. Um, that is basically alleging that my frame, sorry, my bottom bracket is not made to specification, which um, is quite an insult indeed. Um, so they're probably gonna get it in the neck now because that is defamatory behavior, especially when it's not true. And you shouldn't insult five-year-olds because they tend to have big brothers. Anyway, joking aside, this uh, the bike shop said they got it stuck and then removed it. Now looking at the, the marks that are on the bottom bracket, I would say they did get it stuck and I'd probably say they used a hammer to get it out. Um, but we'll go to the bike frame now and then measure it up. Now looking at the, this is the non-drive side, this is the, the opening. Now just to the eye, you can see the bottom bit here is quite thin. You know, it's paper, not paper thin, but it's probably a couple of mil thick. Over here, up here, it's really thick. Over here is thick and over here isn't. So just to the eye, that hole does not look round. The bit that you can see behind is a load of grease, a hydraulic line and the DI2 box. Um, <laughs> this is just appalling, absolutely appalling. Custom made bike frame and a bottom bracket that's far from round. So let me get my gauge and then we'll see how we get on. So the suspicion was this was undersized. This is a BB86 gauge, so it's 40.95. That's not going in at all. I can actually see the gap around the side of it if I um, hold the light. I'm hoping that comes through. Um, yeah, absolutely disgraceful. Um, I'll try the other side and then see what we get. So what I've done here is I've machined the plug in the other side just so it will go in. And then hopefully you can see how unround the hole is. So it's locally, locally dreadful. Absolutely appalling. Can't believe that. Right. Now I've gone and corrected the balls, come back and um, here we are now um so this is this is the day after um the crux of it is you know we've had to take off um a little bit of material off the other side and then chew it up now the the thing with this is a normal a normal hambini bottom bracket the standard type looks like that in order to get this to work I have to use that, which is the neck variety. So you can see the center is smaller, narrower. The reason is because of the 
um, hydraulic line and the DI2 box. So a ruler test, you put a ruler in and then you hit an obstruction, in this case the hydraulic line, a normal Hambini bottom bracket certainly won't push all the way through. So it's not always a showstopper. If you can get the bottom bracket in halfway, push it down into the cavity, which is what I'm going to try and do, and then push it through the other way, then it should work. Now, this one probably would go in, but it's damaged. So given that, the opportunity, because the, the, the bike shop managed to damage it, it doesn't look, well, it's, there's hammer marks on it. Um, it probably doesn't look so uh, easy to see on camera, but it, it is. Um, so we're gonna go for, for this one. So this is machined to go in there, um, and I'll show you how to put that in right now. Now for this, um, oh, bugger. normally I'd use plastic parts, but today I'm gonna use metal. So the bottom bracket locates like that, and then we're gonna use a metal receiver on the other side to push it through. We'll push it through halfway, and then, um, so from the other side, from the drive side, um, and then flick it over the uh, hydraulic line and then back through. So let's try that now. Here we go, so it's all done up. Should just go loose as it goes, pops through halfway. Okay, so it's gone loose, so we'll take it out and I'll show you where we're at now. So, when I installed this bottom bracket, I took, left the bearings out so you could see, but what's happened is the bottom bracket is halfway into the, uh, into the aperture, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide that hydraulic hose underneath the bottom bracket into the gap like that so now it's ready to push through the second half okay so here we go we'll push this through Right, we're all done, let me take it apart and show you. This is the drive side, um, and this has been machined, so if we look, this is a two uh, 50 micron, two thou feeler gauge. That won't go in, so that is a half a sheet of paper. It's flush pretty much all the way around. Yeah, before we had 0.2 millimeters, so it's, you can probably, hopefully, just about see that all the way around. On the non-drive side, it is, um, uh, there's no flange, so we don't really need to worry about that. So we've got the bearings in, well lined up semi in, and we're just gonna push them in now. Now some of you will be wondering why there's no grease on there, and that's just so that you, I can uh, initiate a response for a comment. Okay, so that's both sides in now. We'll take this apart, put the um, dust caps in, and then go from there.
We'll try the crank set in it now. <clears throat> so this crank set has some running marks uh, on it which are indicative of misalignment. Um, that is the drive side, that's the bearing that was uh, shagged. Um, but we can put this through now and then see how we get on. There's no play there, and then we'll do up the two pinch bolts. Right, that's all done up, so let's give it a quick spin. That's not too bad, given that it's a um, oval chain ring. So yeah, that's spinning quite freely. More importantly, there's no creak. So that is a result. We'll get the chain back on and then get this thing out of here. That brings us to the end of this video. If you're wondering why I haven't got the uh, princess blanket and the tripod set up, it's because I had a minor accident with the hairdresser. Now, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please use the comment box below. I do read all your comments. Uh, I might not respond to them all. That's because I'm a lazy fucker. But there you go. Um, as always, um, till next time. Ciao, ciao.